to uh, break a shaft on these cars either. Not with the race coming up this afternoon. Scuderia Filippinetti, Ferrari 250 LM in, uh, uh, on track ahead of the Lavent Cup. Jackie Stewart with that uh, distinctive tartan. Last year we saw the first race car he owned. The, uh... But my goodness, what a revival, because there are three superstars in this event, and there's one you never expected to see. It is the 1996 Formula One world champion, Damon Hill, returning to his roots. It's the green flag for the formation lap. Trevor Barnes on the 350 because they usually went quicker than a Max than a G45 matchless. Damon Hill, who was in 17th position, has made up three places, four places. He's now in 13th position. And look, look at the style of Damon Hill. Cool, calm and collected in a Formula well, One car and looking and completely at ease on a, on a motorcycle. Evans and it's not because he's never ridden one before. He's a very keen motorcycle rider now and has one of the fabled 916 Ducatis in his stable at his Dublin home. Rides it regularly, but certainly not as quick as this. This is lap five, three laps to go at the end of this one. Damon Hill pulling away now from... Jordan. Steve Soper, it's the grey cars that go better from the outside of the front row, Lots overtaking some out really wide, uh, but uh, it looks like it is the car of Andrew Jordan who leads with trying to sweep round the outside. Steve Soper into 10th place in car 32, the BTCC leader for this season. Yes, he just repassed Tiffany Dell, who has Frank Stippler closing in. Uh, David Coulthard, 12. Sorry, David Coulthard in number 25. He's running around in 15th place, so he's gained five positions. Two were given to him, of course. The two cars not starting near in the front. Anthony Reid and Sir Chris Hoy. But uh, all along, let's look out of my commentary box window. I can't see if David's smiling, but I sort of sense he is. No, he's not. In fact, he's concentrating. He's <laughs> really there. He's grimacing. How, oh, how, oh, how did it go so wrong, David? <laughs> Working away very hard. And they have nicer upholstery now than they did then. Slightly less oily rag. He's pointing straight some of the time. I do still feel they'd be more realistic if we had a couple of children sliding around on the back seat. And it's on! And the front row moves as one for the wonderful start from Dario Franchitti in the middle of the front row. Justin Law trying to go to the outside. These are big cars, they're fast cars, and it's not that wide a circuit. I didn't have too much of trouble, really. I didn't ever take anybody much. No, but actually I did for a while. But the, pro the biggest problem is, is that you... is assessing... Just Gerhard Berger with Ludovic Lindsay takes second place in his E-Type lightweight. There they are, the two E-Types going round together on the slowing down lap. In third place, a great drive from Patrick Tombe. You see the Cobra with its headlights still on in the middle. That's the car started by Nicola Manassian, who came through from a fairly lowly grid position. Soon be underway for this one-hour celebration of uh, everything GT. We're underway for one hour of racing, 14.29. The Union flag is raised and dropped, and away they go. And the White Sir Cobra didn't get away initially. That was Henderson in number 17. But uh, up the outside, over the grass down the inside, taking the advantage was the Jaguar of Chris Wood. But uh, very tight in the going out now. Guido van, was it Guido van der Garda taking over now, was it? I thought from David Hart, did David start? Yes, David started. And Oliver Bryant has lost time in the pits. He's a lot further, the number one Cobra is a lot further behind the number two car. Yeah, that really, really doesn't help. So Ollie Bryant's going to have to depose about six of the cars between him. Just looking into the long shot to see where he's in that pack. He's got certainly the Project Aston Martin with Simon Hadfield on board between he and the second place number two Cobra. There, Guido van der Garde giving chase then. He just went in deep, didn't he, and uh, carried too much speed, got over that grassy bit, and then had to, uh, rather than fight the car, let it come back on its own, and uh, straight through went Guido van der Garde. 
as you pointed out, Mark, Zolly Bryant is hanging on as best he can to Frank Stippler. Uh, but it is quite him on, but, but yeah, he's, he needs Stippler to make uh, to make a mistake to get back past him, I think. And Shedden is right back with Vandergaard again uh, down at Bruce. Yeah, I just wanted to see as a repeat, not quite as close this lap, but again, a better exit from St Mary's. We see this lap after lap that the Jaguar, that bit more nibble. Oh, he's jinky up the inside. He's just got to keep Guido van der Garde guessing when the tack is going to come. The pressure is constant, but it's where the dive will come. But now as they accelerate after the second, out of the second part of Lavin, you can see that extra little bit of grunt that Cobra has pulls the number two clear of the number 89. They go through the kink. They start heading up to the place where it all went wrong for Gordon Shedd not so long ago, when he just simply went into the corner too deep. But he's going up the inside. Will it work? No, Guido van der Garde just creeps silently, very gently over towards the apex of the corner, leaves no gap, but right on his tail now. He tight. I don't know that he has, now he has. Oh, and he's, this run is wide, the he's run wide, and there's a change, I think. No, but look for the grunt of the Cobra, it's going to be applied. Are they going to touch? Yes, they have. And very sideways, will he hit the tyres? Oh, he stayed clear of the greenery just, but that's our race lead, has changed again. The flag goes down, it's a very, very slippery circuit and uh, one of the Cobras rocketed through uh, the order. You can see the 98 Cobra moving like a train up the outside, but it is Kenny Brack in the AC uh, Daytona Coupe who leads into Magic for the first time. So that's Martin Brundle up into second place in Nick Mason's GTO. Now, there's Martin Brundle in car number 22, the Ferrari, gorgeous Ferrari. And then the very little scene, Maserati 151, right behind it now with Derek Hill. Where is he? And uh, instant see who's first in. And, uh, Derek Hill flicks to the inside. Not going to uh, get past Martin Brundle quite so easily. The number 12 Cobra still plop, uh, props up the field. Leader through past us. A 139.5, new fastest lap to race leader. Kenny Brack, 139.505. Brundle and Hill absolutely locked in combat, both in the 40s. Brundle with the best Sector 3 of the entire race. He's rather being pushed that, isn't he? Derek Hill right under his tail in the Maserati. And Hill jostling up, trying to get the nose of the Maserati up ahead of the Ferrari, but he can't quite make it. We've got Mass and Chiva running absolutely together in the White Cobras, then Manassian, then Oliver. Bright cars, dark sky is the story of the day. That rear shot looking back from Fordwater towards St Mary's, you can see the black clouds behind me. Martin Brundle, two car lengths clear in the gorgeous Ferrari, but he's slightly slow coming out of St Mary's. And again, the Maserati is faster as they go into the dip. He won't be close enough, but a couple of laps running. I don't think Brundle has the confidence in the grip of that Ferrari. And he's, but he has a lot to make up, because of course uh, Ludovic Carroll lost a lap or so early on. And there's uh, Anthony out there just for the fun of it. Nine minutes remaining. coming up well into third place, but it looks like it's uh, Middlehurst, Stretton, James, James. But they're all so close, the top three is Richard Atwood. In but fact, the last lap, their, their, their lap times were split by just uh, 0.028 of a second, the top three. All yeah. the spray in the four short the effect. Good to see Atwood here. is still going again. Here's Atwood, we had a spinner coming out of the chicane, and that is uh, number 36, which is Andy Willis, who was, uh, in fact, the, uh, the front row starters who finished one two three but it wasn't quite that easy and uh, Richard Atwood comes through a lovely slide through the uh, chicane he's going to move up into 
fourth place, Richard Atwood. Great drive to fourth place from Richard. Fifth, Andy Willis, right behind him. Best of the four-cylinder uh, runners, 0.9 of a second behind uh, Atwood.